In search of inspiration for Planet Zoo, I often end up looking at concept art made for real zoos. It can be fascinating to look at and even often feels more alive and colorful than real life pictures, making it easy to compare to the design of Planet Zoo. The concept art we'll be looking at today are all designs for big aviaries with most of them featuring species you might not expect to see in an aviary. Today I'll cover a few of these pictures and some of the bird species I think we need in Planet Zoo to start building stuff like this ourselves. And let me know in the comments which birds you hope to see the most in Planet Zoo, flying or not. These designs all look like something that should be possible to pull off in Planet Zoo, but with the current very unsatisfying bird selection in the game, we sadly don't have much reason to give it a try. And I don't even think we necessarily only need like 20 new flying bird species to make this possible. Just getting like one or two species for each of these concepts could be reason enough to let our imagination run wild and do designs we have never tested before in Planet Zoo. Let us start by looking at something that feels very fitting for our newest DLC the Grasslands Animal Park. This is a concept from Mandai Bird Paradise, which is a park that will open later this year in Singapore. It is easy to see that this is part of an Australian area, and when you first look at it, it barely appears like an aviary. But up in the sky, you can sense a mess cover. And when looking at this, I get the feeling that Planet Zoo as it is should allow you to build something very similar to this. Sure, mess pieces can be annoying to build with, but this type of aviary don't have to be made with a unique shape. A quite square design should work for this. Most of the scenery here fits what we got in Planet Zoo and does appear close to some regular habitat builds you see from time to time, if we ignore the mess. But the mess is really what makes this so interesting. It just takes this to the next level of impressive. It makes the whole area come to life rather than just the ground level as we are so used to. While this concept features multiple species and more species is always more fun, this concept would just need the bare minimum for us to build it in Planet Zoo. For the ground living species, we of course already got the emu, as seen here in the picture. Alternatively, you could use wallabies and kangaroos in here, or maybe build a non-walkthrough habitat inside of it for wombats. This concept art from the living desert of an area that opened a few years ago is quite similar, but a little smaller it seems and less focused on birds. But here you can see they got wallabies as well as some enclosures inside of the aviary. So covering the ground area for something like this in Planet Zoo is not complicated, but none of these species give us a reason to turn this into an aviary. In the Mandai picture we can see at least 5 flying birds in the picture, but just getting one of these would already be reason enough to try and build a concept like this. And the bird I would suggest here is the rainbow lorikeet. They seem to have a decent size for the exhibit as we know it. They are colorful and entertaining to look at, with nice sounds. They can live in big groups, which makes the loops less easy to spot. And in real zoos, guests will often be able to pay to feed them. This seems like something that should be possible to pull off in Planet Zoo, considering the butterflies also can interact with the guests. So this makes them even more interesting from a gameplay perspective. So just by adding this one bird species, we'll be able to explore new and creative designs for several of our already existing Planet Zoo species, since it would give us a reason to turn some of our habitat designs into aviaries. And let's stay in Singapore in Mandai Bird Paradise. Here is a concept art for a big Southeast Asian aviary. Again, this feels like something you should be able to build in Planet Zoo already. And again, I will point out, we don't need like 10 flying birds to pull this off. In the area in front of the guest, we could build a habitat for something non-walkthrough we already got in the game, like the water buffalo or cassowary maybe. And then we just need like one or two species to give us a reason to build mess over this whole area. And this time I'll even suggest a bird which I think will work the best as a habitat species, even though it can fly. But I don't think the flying behavior is very important for making this bird believable in the game. I'm talking about the Victorian Crown Pigeon. From a gameplay perspective, this will not behave much more different than the peafowl. In real life they spend a lot of time walking around on the ground, but they can fly, so you will see them housed in a tropical dome or an aviary or another type of enclosure with a roof. So even though I don't see any reasons for the game to force a roof over the head of this bird, 
I as a player who keep realism in mind will always place a top or a mess over a habitat for the crown pigeon. So this would give me a reason to build something like this. Of course it would be more fun with more than one bird species and if some of them could fly in the game. But just getting this one species even without flight would be a good start. So in my opinion we don't necessarily need flying mechanics for building aviaries. This is not much different than what I did in my desert zoo, the drylands. Here I pretend the flamingos can fly even though they cannot do that in the game. This gave me a reason to build an aviary for them. I made that aviary big enough to also house oryxes to make it appear more interesting. And even though nothing is flying around in here, then it still appears believable as an aviary cause of the flamingos. But without them it would feel awkward with oryxes under a mesh. Of course. I would love to add more birds and especially flying ones in here in the future, but the flamingos does give me the bare minimum of a reason to build this aviary. The idea is more or less the same with a species like the Victoria crown pigeon in this concept. And now we are going to the Netherlands for what might be one of the craziest concepts for an aviary I have ever seen. This is basically your typical African savanna mix but completely covered and because of that with a lot of free flying birds. This is a concept made for avifauna for a future project, a place I was lucky enough to visit myself a few years ago. This park mostly focuses on birds but do also have some species of mammals and other animals which are often sharing their enclosures with bird species. Of course we already have zebras, giraffes and many other savanna species, so we can again do the groundwork here and otherwise this enclosure feels doable in Planet Zoo. But we are again missing a reason to put a top on this. Well, we do have flamingos, but for such a big area it would be preferred to have multiple species of birds to make it believable, but we don't necessarily need as many as they show on these pictures. There are multiple species to choose from, so I'll just point out a few habits habitat species that makes good sense for planet zoo. My most wanted bird and most wanted animal for planet zoo overall is the great white pelican. They feel like such an obvious inclusion for zoo games but always end up being forgotten about. They are also seen on these pictures and just make a lot of sense in an aviary like this together with flamingos. And again I don't see any reason to give them flight mechanics in planet zoo but they are sometimes held in aviaries in real life and therefore they can give us a reason to build a structure like this. A bird species loved by many Zoo Tycoon 2 fans is the secretary bird, which is also shown here. And again, it can fly in real life but don't do it a lot, so I don't think flying is important to make them believable in the game, but since they can fly in real life, it gives us a reason to build an aviary for them. At least if we care about realism. If we got the pelican and the secretary bird together with our already existing flamingos, then I think we would start to see people begin to build stuff like this. A whole new way of thinking our typical savanna habitats, which we have been building since day one of Planet Zoo. So not only are birds important and fascinating on their own, getting a decent number of bird species for both habitats and exhibits can make us dive into new creative ways of building in Planet Zoo which will also affect the many mammals and other species we already got in the game. A total of 8 bird species after more than 3 years is just not good enough. I hope you enjoyed this video and understood some of my points and don't forget to give it a like if you did and subscribe to my channel to keep me going.